Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today. Looking forward to today's episode as we take on Seville, Real Madrid and Barcelona in the final three league games of the season. And come the final league game of the season, fingers crossed we will have done enough to guarantee ourselves a top four position and Champions League football once again next season. So since you guys were last here, we've played a good few games to get to this point of the season and we didn't really finish off March in the best of form as you can see after that 5-3 loss to Juventus. Uh, the rest of March was pretty terrible with uh, us losing 1-0 to Real Sporting Gijon and then drawing 3-3 to Huesca who uh, at this point I think they're like in the bottom half of the table. 15th in the table right so that should have been a routine win for us um, given how poor they've been this season. They got Champions League football last season. They came like fourth in the, in the table didn't they? Um, uh, this season, not quite so good for them, and that should have been a win for us, unfortunately. It wasn't, but heading into April, April, a much better month for us. Kicking the things off with a 5-3 victory over Real Valladolid. Federico Sioni scoring four goals in that game before we had to rely on our own goal against uh, Levante to ensure we picked up the three points in that game. Rather lucky to come away with a 4-3 victory over Abar. We scored all of our goals in the first half. Abar played much better in the second half to try and get themselves back in the game. Uh, we didn't like scoring in the second half, actually. So very lucky we got the four goals in that first half uh, to make sure we won the game 4-3. We then had a 2-2 draw with Athletic Bilbao. We had two goals scored by Federico Sioni there, which is fantastic. And then we got very lucky in the game against Celta de Vigo, scoring very late on there, as you can see, Kenneth Gisk in the 89th minute. So what that means for the league table is that we are guaranteed at least a Europa League place for next season, which is fantastic. So very excited about that one. Uh, we're on 72 points points right now as you can see and with three games to go potentially we could catch up to Valencia and come second I think Real Madrid are pretty much champions now once again for the fifth season in a row so well done to Real Madrid for that one if we can get off this form thing can I get off that this always happens why does this always come up and I just can never get rid of it Oh, I have to click away from it. That makes more sense. Uh, Barcelona are currently behind us by two points, so they could easily overtake us. But Atletico Madrid are four points behind us, and they could also overtake us. However, if Atletico Madrid end up uh, losing their first game of today's episode and we win, we would then go seven points clear of them, right? And that would be enough with two games to go to qualify for the Champions League. So... Big tabs need to be kept on the Atletico Madrid game. We've also had the youth intake come through. It's on the screen right now. Not quite as good as the previous ones we've had, but the top three players there with four star and four and a half stars of potential, if they reach that potential, could be fantastic players for us in La Liga. So fingers crossed they develop nicely and fingers crossed we see some good results from them. Of course, if you want to have one of those players named after you, there's a link down in the description below to take you to the Patreon to get players named after you. So heading into the game against Sevilla, this is the lineup that we're going to go for. Krenta starts in goal with a backline of Varel, Araya, Rubens and Rask. Noak and Catania start in the centre of midfield with Terziev and Paolo Turner on the wings. Kenneth Gisk and Sione leave the line for us right now because Juan Morales is currently out injured uh, for another two weeks or so with uh, something. So actually he'll probably miss the rest of the season, Juan Morales. But has, you know, performed relatively well since coming in in January. Perhaps underwhelming a little bit with his five goals and three assists, particularly when you consider that across a whole season. He's played half a season or so. He's made, what, uh, 14 start, fourteen appearances, okay? In 14 games, he's got eight goal contributions. Sione, in 17 league appearances, has got uh, 18 goal contributions with 16 goals and two assists in the league. And if we look at Kenneth Gisk, look at his reports, look at his form. In 16 possible league appearances for him or 16 league appearances that's made this season he has had 13 goal contributions so a little bit lackluster potentially from the new boy so as kickoff is upon us against Seville today uh, who are Atletico Madrid playing they're playing Valencia who are currently second in the table so hopefully Valencia do us a favor they'll end up going to beat um, Atletico Madrid we win this game and we'll guarantee ourselves Champions League football, which will be very exciting. In the meantime, we have conceded. So uh, we're not really doing our job at the moment, unfortunately. Not the best start to the game, obviously. Hopefully we turn things around. We have played relatively well in April. As I say, we were a bit lucky in a couple of games out there. It's that general end of the season just starting to run out of steam a little bit. I think we're starting to get to. And making some silly mistakes like that one there. Nearly conceding a goal off the back of that mistake. But Sione into Gisk. Gets it back to Sione, into Terziev, into Varel, into Catania. Some great passing right now as Paolo Turner 
messes it up a little bit and the highlight finishes. Paolo Turner with the throw in and he wins back possession somehow. I thought there might have been a foul in there somewhere. The cross goes to absolutely no one though unfortunately and Seville look to come forward. They've got three men in attack there against our back four so we are almost outnumbered. Araya with a huge sliding challenge there and manages to get it clear. Lucky he didn't concede a penalty there but the Seville are coming straight back at us although they have given possession back to us and Gisk coming forward. Here comes Gisk, Gisk, Gisk scores. All right, you'd love to see it. 21 for the season for him now in terms of goals, um, which means he must have scored a lot of goals in the Champions League. So that's where we saw him had 13 goal contributions in total, and like seven of those came from assists. I want to see the breakdown of Gisk's goal as a minute. And I know that Sione has got uh, 33, 34 goals uh, in total, so I'm going to assume a lot of those were in the Cup and the league as well as immediately Seville peg is back. All right, not ideal, obviously. Not ideal at all, this sort of situation. But we've shown time and time again, we never say die. We always come back into these sorts of games. So fingers crossed for us. Uh, right now, Barcelona are winning, so they go temporarily ahead of us. I can't see the Atletico Valencia score, but right now it doesn't matter right now because we're losing. We've got to win our game. There you go, Barcelona 2-1 up in their game. That's just come through on this little screen. So they will go ahead of us in the table. Uh, Atletico are beating Valencia 2-0, so that's not good for us either. As it stands right now, if we lose this game, we'll be one point clear. Oh God, we're going to fall out, aren't we? I told you it was going to happen. I told you this was going to happen because I can't see us beating both Barcelona and Real Madrid, right? I can't see that happening. So I really am worrying now. I mean, Gisk is... Oh, was about to start celebrating then. Put that in the back of it as Atletico go 3-0 up in their game. That's 3-0 up now, uh, which is frustrating. We're still losing. Demand more. Very, very attacking, please. I want to click on that. There we go. Very attacking. Ha. Ah, this is not ideal for us. Particularly with Barcelona now going ahead of us in the table. Can we make any sort of changes or tweaks out there? David Perez, come on for Paolo Turner. Be a, a winger on attack. Terziev, uh, inside forward on attack. Uh, Catania can be a, a, a Mazzala on attack. Make it advanced playmaker on attack. Rask goes on to attack. I mean, literally everyone attacking right now. We need to score some goals in the final 20 minutes of this game. As Terziev gets it into Catania. Catania shoots from distance, but that's never going in the back of the net. And instead of us coming on the attack now, those tactical changes have been made. It's Seville coming on the attack, which is uh, far from ideal, right? We do not want to see this as, oh, we've lost possession there. No, no, good block, but they still have possession. Good blocks for us there. For Seville are coming at us. They want to win this game. They want to secure themselves top half football this season. Um, a poor season for Seville in general. But boys, this is not looking good. All other results going against us right now. And with five minutes to go, despite us doing our utmost to try and score some goals, we're losing this one. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Frustratingly, we were the better team that game. Uh, we had more shots, we had more possession, things like that. That is very frustrating to lose. But despite not scoring in that game, Sione's agent wants him to have a new contract. I mean, can we sack the agent, please? How is he? He's uh, he lords his clients at other clubs, but is a very patient negotiator. Um, his favourite personnel is me. I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind giving him a new contract. Because he is very good, right? Look at his goal-scoring record the past two seasons. 24 in the league, 33 overall in all competitions. Like, So what, what, hang on a second. Reports form. Oh, that's the last 20 games. That's not the entire season. That's the last 20 games. Ah, which makes it look even worse for our boy, uh, the new boy. So actually, yeah, let's give, let's, let's talk about a new contract. Regular starter. Can we do that? He wants important player. Okay, important player. Finalise. Andre's got to offer him the contracts. Okay, a five-year deal, £59,000. Uh, let's get rid of that optional extension. Release fee clause, let's lock it in at £85 million. Uh, Suggest he's going to come back and want £66,000 per week, which would make him far and away the top owner at the club. I think he probably deserves it though, right? Can we bring it down to like 55? Oh, 55 would be great. Landmark bonus is good. Unused substitute fee is fine because he's always going to play games anyway, so it's never going to be on the bench. Uh, okay, suggest he wants 63. How about 56? 
61, 56, 61, 57. He agrees to that. Okay, new contract for Sione. You love to see it. Next up, though, Real Madrid away from home. I well, I really think this one could be a bit of a bloodbath, uh, definitely. Uh, we are 17th in the Premier League spend, though. We spent £32 million net, so we, we have lost a lot of money this season. But I guess we have gained a lot, too, from Champions League football. But will we have Champions League football next season? I really do not know. I am very upset about the fact that we might not have Champions League football next season. Kenneth Gisk is just injured there for three to four weeks, so we are now missing... A striker so this might give a chance for Adrisa Ferdinand actually to uh, have another chance of playing a bit more regularly uh, at least for the final two league games of the season or so of all the teams to play right of all the teams to play for the final two league games of the season which we need to win if we want Champions League football we need to win both of these games right and um, well Real Madrid and Barcelona I'm not sure. Uh, for the Real Madrid game, we are going to switch back to the 5-1-2-2-1, two, two, one, whatever it's called, 5 at the back formation. Um, we're going to quick pick very quickly to see what's going on there. And the fact that they're putting Bradbury up front right does not fill me with hope, I'll be honest with you. Maybe what we do instead, right, is do we do something like that for the final game or something? And have like... We'll bring, where is he? Uh, Terziev on there to be uh, an inside forward on attack. And then Ferdinand obviously won't play. We'll swap him over with Paolo Turner, who's somehow in the midfield. Uh, you can be an inside forward on attack. So essentially like three strikers there, pretty much. And then Ferdinand will come off. Although Ferdinand actually can play there quite nicely as a deep line playmaker. Let's try that. Okay, that's the team, given that we can't play two strikers. Submit. Let's go. So kickoff is upon us. Real Madrid have just won the league title. Uh, there's no way Valencia can catch them up, as you can see. So we've got it all to play for. If anything, Real Madrid, you know, let us win, please, because you've already guaranteed yourself a title, right? Please let us win. Something tells me that won't happen, though, as Wallace nearly scores an early goal for Madrid. I mean, a draw, a draw might be okay here today. You know, a draw could be successful for us. It all kind of depends on the other games going on around us, which I've neglected to look at, who, who else is playing, basically. I don't need to know who else is playing. We just need to win. Or we, we need to focus on our own game, but we will be looking at who else is playing in a moment's time, actually. I should have looked at that before we kicked off this game. Uh, in the meantime, Real Madrid... Ooh, I thought I had scored then. Just put it wide of the post. Highlight straight away after that, as well as Rubens on the ball into Lukau. Lukau finds Varel. Varel into Ferdinand. And Ferdinand, the playmaker, into Varel once again, who ooh, gets past his man nicely. Varel across to Paolo Turner, not quite getting the ball to its intended target. But this time, Paolo Turner does get on the end of the ball. Saved by the keeper, unfortunately, but a very exciting opening 11 minutes of the game. The corner, I assume, it isn't going to go in the back of Veneta's Real Madrid. I mean, sorry, Barcelona, as you can see here, 1-0 up against Huesca. So that's obviously not ideal for us. But what is ideal for us is that Sione gets his 34th of the season and puts his 1-0 up against champions of the league, Real Madrid. Now that's is a great, great way for us to uh, respond to Barcelona going 1-0 up in their game. If we win this game, we are looking, com well, I say comfortable. Depends what Atletico do, right? Atletico are playing against, I've not even seen that, the highlights are coming so thick and fast, I've got no time to look at the table in between uh, the highlights. As Paolo Turner finds Sione, Sione now, can he get another? Oh, he hits the post, how unlucky. And straight away, I can't even see who else is playing or look at the table because there's another highlight which we can't put in the back of an end. It's blocked nicely and Real Madrid on the counter-attack. They find Wallace. Ungar is open wide. Can they get the ball into Ungar? Look at... Oh, <laughs> that was agonisingly close. The goal line technology does come from it didn't cross the line, which is uh, beautiful. <sighs> We've been let off there. So let me pause the game. Pause the game. Right. Barcelona winning. We can't do much about that. Atletico, who are they playing? I can't see Atletico on here. So are they even playing? Atletico? Atletico? Why can I not see Atletico Madrid? They are genuinely not there. Have they already played a game? Atletico. Schedule. They haven't played. They're playing Granada. And they should be playing them right now at the same time as us. So why can I not see that? Granada. Atletico. 
Oh, it was there. It was like blanked out because Real Zaragoza and Villarreal were at the top and we couldn't see that. So that was just a weird bug in the game, obviously. Okay, they're drawing 0-0. Keep tabs on that one, though. That was a weird one. In the meantime, Real Madrid looking to come forward on the ball. Come on, boys. Let's get a nice challenge in here. Let's not let Ungar come forward as Ungar does come forward. Plays it back to his midfield partner. The ball is out wide. Ungar, Wallace. Wallace misses it again. How many chances do Real Madrid want to throw away in this game? Hopefully, another one right now as Barcelona go 2 0 up in there. Oh, you hate to see it. All right, pulled back on level terms. Okay, so as it stands, we are still one point ahead of Atletico Madrid, which is great, but ideally, we want to be winning this game so we can maximise the points deficit to Atletico and, you know, hopefully try and catch up to Barcelona a little bit. And if we beat Barcelona, finish ahead of them in the league. And it, a win just makes it so much nicer for us. If we lose, then we are in very dangerous territory. Um, I can't remember. I think we might have a worse head-to-head -head record against Atletico in the league, which means if you finish level on points with Atletico Madrid, right, they will be ahead of us. So hopefully that won't happen as Paolo Turner finds Catania. Back to Paolo Turner. Back to Catania. Catania. Oh, could have scored that one. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Fortunately for us. Oh, no. Fortunately for us, Granada were holding out against Atletico Madrid. Now Atletico Madrid have just scored a penalty and they are 1-0 up against Granada. Okay. Panic stations now because we are... Lukau. Lukau, come on, mate. Better than that from you, please, Lukau. Please don't be a pet. I can't watch. I can't watch this. Oh, you hate to see it. Champions League football is being taken away from us right now. Taken away from us. Let's go a bit more attacking. Let's shout, demand more. I don't know what else we can do, really, at, at this stage, right? Catania's coming off slightly injured. We might take him off, right, if he's had a knock. Let's just get Catania off. Let's not risk that, although he's playing at right back. Uh, Rask comes on at right back, please, instead. Adrisa is going to come off for Nowak. That's what we'll do. Come on, boys. We need this. Come on, Granada. Granada, please do us a favour. There's nothing else we can really do out here now. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So, going into the final day of the season, unless we do something clever here now, we, uh, I mean, we have to win. A draw isn't going to be enough, right? A draw's not going to be enough. Sione gets a goal that we need. We need another one. We need one more, please. A draw gives us 73 points. Atletico, after their win, will be on 74 points. And none of this is in is, is within our control at this stage now. It's out of our control. We've done a great job getting a draw here. A really good job getting a draw. Proved a lot of people wrong in avoiding defeat, right? That's a great result, particularly given that we just lost to Seville. Thing is, though, that formation, that slightly tweaked formation, works very well there. So I think we'll play it again against Barcelona at home. And, I mean, <laughs> we have to beat Barca. We have to beat Barca. Now, we lost to them earlier on in the season, right? What was the score earlier on in the season? Because, actually, this matters hugely. When we played Barcelona here, it lost 2-1. So if we win, like, 3-1 or 2-0 we will technically have a better head-to-head -head record than Barcelona and we'll finish on 76 points, as will they, and that means we'll have a better head-to-head -head record and go ahead of them on the head-to-head -head record. So actually, it, it is in our hands still. This is in our hands still. We just, we just have to beat Barcelona by a two-goal margin. What you'll also be pleased to know is that the B team, the B team are champions of the Gibraltar National League. They've finally bloody done it. They've pulled their fingers out. It also helps that Europa have had their worst season since this save file started, right? So we've been very lucky in that regard. But uh, we have just won the Gibraltar National League for the first time since we last won it, which is fantastic. So very pleased with the boys there. I think hugely helped out by the uh, 78 goals scored in the league alone between uh, Fury and Batty. Uh, brilliant stuff from them. Well done, boys. It's a shame their potential is terrible. Like, they've only got, like, two-star potential. If they had good potential, right, 
we'd have them straight in the first team. But they're playing in the B team because they, they are rubbish and they're not going to play for our first team at all. So they're there to try and win the Gibraltar National League instead. And they're just far too good for that, but nowhere near good enough for us. Oh, Lukau's just picked up a bruised knee. Oh, that's kind of annoying because he might now end up missing this Barcelona game, which is a little frustrating, I must say. Um, I think what we do, depending on how Lukau's looking right, I think we leave... It's only a bruised knee. He should be fine to play if it's a bruised knee, right? It can't be that bad for him. He'll be fine to play. He'll be fine to play. So I think we leave the lineup as it is, right? I don't think there's any need to change it. Maybe we look to bring Tyson Brown on instead of Ferdinand just because he might play a little better. Or maybe Nowak instead of Tyson Brown for this game, right? Juan Morales is coming back from injury. I'm going to bring him onto the bench to see how he does. But other than that, I, I don't really feel like making changes will do anything for us. So, that's the team. So, as kickoff is upon us, we have to win by two clear goals here. But two minutes into the game, a direct free kick on a highlight makes me think this is going to go in the back of a net. Okay, we've got to win 3-1 now. You know, I was, going to, I was about to say we've got to win by two clear goals. So, a 2-0 win at home is doable, right? Is doable. 3-1. We're asking quite a lot at that stage to score three goals past the Barcelona side, who are very, very good. Atletico are playing against Getafe right now. Paolo Turner has now just got injured. You hate to see it. Uh, let's bring David Perez on, on that right-hand side instead. So already a huge blow there for that. That is very frustrating. Oh, you hate to see it. So everything that has gone wrong, or could go wrong, has gone wrong right now. And... Really, a uh, Getafe though. Getafe have just scored one against Atletico. Look here, Getafe one nil up. So a, a draw, a draw might be good enough for us right now. I, I neglected to look right at the head-to-head -head record against uh, Atletico. I didn't look at that. I didn't even factor that into my thinking. Um, so if we score an equaliser, we'll then find out if we go ahead of them or not. Although not that it matters right now, because Atletico have just scored an equaliser themselves, so they're back on to 75 points, and a draw is now suddenly not good enough for us to get Champions League football. Come on, Krenz with a huge save there, boys. We need to go more attacking already. Attacking, demand more. Come on, we, we, we play better away from home against Real Madrid than we are doing at home against Barcelona right now. Another... Four goals we need to score now. Four goals. That's so frustrating. How many times do you actually see direct free kicks go in the back of a net? Like, ne Krenter, he was there. He just watched it go over his head. Oh, that's so frustrating, right? You hate to see it. Okay, dressing room. Thrash the arms. I'm far from pleased with what I've just seen. Tactically, advanced playmaker. Advanced playmaker on attack. Uh, wing backs can go on attack at complete wing back attack. Catania complete wing back attack. Like we have to throw everything at this now, and I don't. I'll be honest. I don't think it's going to be enough. First highlight of the second half comes within the first minute of the second half as Lukau nearly gets himself sent off with a diving challenge there. Uh, the clearance is not very good either and it's just gone straight back to Barcelona who find the ball out wide, who look to come forward. Brown on the ball. Brown. Good save by Krenter there, but we need to have an immediate response in the second half. We need to score a goal every 10 minutes or so, and hopefully we might do it right now. As Sione, oh, puts it just wide. How unfortunate. Oh, no. Terzi in the middle, cleared. Varelk, boys, come on. We're better than this. I know we are. Okay, Brown on the ball then for Barcelona again. If they get a third, that's it. Game over if they get a third. It's not game over yet as Sione wins it into Perez. David Perez, come on. You've not been that good for us this season. I was trying to inspire him by about to say, do something clever here to redeem yourself. He's, he's not, has he? He's not at all. As, again, Barcelona still looking to come forward, still in possession. They've given it away to us again, though, as Terziev now gets it to Perez. Perez, get it out wide. Get it out wide to Catania. He does. Catania on the ball. Catania in the area. Catania. Sione. Sione blocks. Why did he not shoot? Was it Quebec there that should have shot? Oh, you... It's just not going to be our day, is it? It's just not going to be our day, particularly now with Atletico Madrid winning. Oh, boys. It's going to be another season finishing fifth. The frustrating thing about this season, though, is that we haven't got the Europa League to win. So... 
it's going to be back to Europa League football next season. We're just not good enough. The thing is, though, this season, I think we've got enough points to get Champions League football if it was last season, I think. I think we've got more points this season, right? Which is obviously great, but it's... God, that this season, the points you need for Champions League places has gone up from last season. So, one of those things, right? One of those things. You know, it's our best ever season in terms of a points haul, I think, as far as I'm aware. I'll double check this in a minute. And yet, we're missing out on Champions League football again as Barca nearly score another one. Right. We have to, we, we've got nothing to lose right now. Absolutely nothing to lose. Uh, Luke Cowley is slightly injured, will come off. Let's bring Juan Morelos on, although he's a left-footed player, isn't he? So you go there as the advanced forward on attack. Uh, you go there as a complete forward on attack as well. Um, Morat, can you do anything more attacking? Be a Mazala on attack. I don't know. We've got to try everything. Rask will come on for Catania. That's the final change we can make, I think, as well. Okay, confirm changes. We gave it our all. We gave it our all. And yeah, 73 points is the most amount of points we've ever had in a league season. It is. And yeah, and last season, that might have actually got a second in the table. That genuinely could have got a second in the table last season. <sighs> I can't quite remember the points totals. It's one of those things, right? The most exciting thing, though, for us is that next season, the minimum expectation should be to win the Europa League. We've done it before. We can do it again, right? Europa League, we have to really push and try and win that again. It's another nice bit of silverware, and we know we can do it. We've done it before. Let's try and do it again. The frustrating thing is, though, obviously, we've given out some new big contracts this season to some players, and uh, money is going to be a bit tighter next season. So the transfer special might not be so special because I don't think there's going to be many transfers in it. Terziev into Morelles. Morelles into Terziev. Terziev comes forward. Terziev shoots. And I don't know what that even was. To be fair, that was a terrible shot. We can point fingers right at various different occasions this season where we've let ourselves down. Like March. We didn't win a single game in March, for example. This final three games of the season, we've played terribly, albeit against two of the best teams in the world and Seville, which is a bit frustrating to lose that one, definitely. But... At the same time, this is our best ever season in terms of a points haul. We are still progressing. Varel is about to be sent off to just make matters worse. So well done, Varel. You hate to see it. We're going to come back stronger next season, though. You know, we keep improving year on year. Obviously, position-wise in the league, we haven't improved year on year. Let's ignore that goal. Let's ignore it. So another season finishing fifth then. Another season where we've just missed out on Champions League football via the league. Obviously last season we won the Europa League. So we got to the Champions League that way, which was very nice. This season, just not quite good enough as well. I don't even care about injuries and suspensions right now. It's the end of the season. So if we look at the league table, right? Uh, if we look to last season, we got 66 points. This season, we got 73. Last season, 73 would have put us third in the table. This season, it puts us fifth, which is rather frustrating. So obviously, uh, all the teams above us doing a lot better this season than they did last season. It's the way football goes though, right? It's the way football goes. And, you know, sometimes you're not going to get lucky. But what I'm excited about next season is winning the Europa League because we have to be one of the favourites for winning that, surely. We have to be. So we are going to finish up today's season and episode here. Uh, not a nice way to finish off the season. I'll, you know, it's not, not the nicest way. But I tell you what, next season, next season we're going to have to come top four and we're going to have to win the Europa League to make up for this season. So next season is going to be fantastic. Let's have a quick look then at the, uh, the season review as well whilst it's here. Uh, Varel played brilliantly this season. Of course, this season we had a really good targeted transfers and they've all worked pretty well. I've been happy with all of them. Varel, uh, superb, obviously there with great ratings. Rubens at the back was very, very solid for us as well. Uh, Juan Morales, obviously not our choice to come into the club, but he played relatively well in his 12 appearances or whatnot. Um, midfielders, I never quite really get good ratings out of midfielders, hence why Quebec and Nowak are both pretty low down on average ratings I can't get a good rating out of any of my midfielders so um, a bit average right but I think they'll only get better and no act for five million pounds you know I can forgive a 6.3 
and we're spending so little on him. Uh, Rask obviously was a bit of a transitional year for him. I think next season he's going to be a lot better as he progresses and plays better. He'll be on like Varel's level next season, I reckon, with his four goals and nine assists. I mean, six assists for Rask is pretty decent, so not too fussed about that one. And then Perez on a free transfer had his worst season yet for us. 99% home ground attendance, that's fantastic. We might ask the board again for a new stadium. That would be quite nice. We can ask them for a new stadium or expansion or something like that. Some great games to remember. Um, the goal of the season was scored by Sione in a big loss to Real Madrid. If we'd won that game, for example, you know, that could have changed our season massively. Uh, broadcast revenue is down, interestingly, which is very weird. Uh, but sponsorship is up, though. Uh, corporate hospitality is up a little bit. Price money is up significantly. And match day and commercial retail down a little bit as well. So nothing too... Well, maybe broadcast revenue is a little bit concerning. But other than that, it's nothing major. Paolo Turner got 11 assists. That's apparently the most assists for a player ever in a season. So Paolo Turner had a really good season then for him. So very happy with that one. <laughs> Rubens had the worst discipline ever, though, with 15 yellow cards and one red card, which is obviously a bit frustrating. Uh, Sione only got 35 goals this season compared to his 50 from last season. But of course, he got tons of goals in the Europa League. So we might see another 50 goal season for Sione next time out. Ah, uh, we have been given the budget. Is the budget there? I thought the budget was there. No, the budget isn't there. So we can't talk about budgets just yet by looks of things. It's not been updated, as you can see. So uh, I'll update you on that, obviously, in tomorrow's uh, transfer special. Um, so until tomorrow, hope you have a lovely evening and you don't cry as much as I am about missing out on the top four. We're going to get it next season. We're going to get it next season. So keep the faith. Keep the faith. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.